Hello, and welcome back to the Balance Bond Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger. And today, I think we're going to do a little solo episode for the first time in a while. In fact, I know we're going to do a solo episode. I was distracted for a second there because (laughs) somehow I got this blue spirulina chia pudding all the way through security in Kauai and all the way back to Los Angeles with me. And I was just eating it before I started recording. And I noticed there is blue chia pudding all over my recording equipment. So if that doesn't set the scene for you, then I don't know what will, but I'm really excited to do a solo today. This is pretty much another impromptu solo because I had a guest lined up for today who wasn't able to make it. She's also pregnant and I know how it goes when you're pregnant and you're almost entering your third trimester and you're just not feeling up to all the things that you normally would. So I'm excited because I've been wanting to do a solo episode to update you guys on not just my pregnancy, but life in general. So this is going to be just a really intimate stream of consciousness, life update type of solo. I hope that it will also have a lot of wisdom and takeaways and inspiration because of course, I always want to bring you value but sometimes I just want to talk. And I have a feeling that the people who've been here for a while, sometimes you just want to listen. So this is going to be the type of episode where you can just do what you're doing, go on a walk, clean your kitchen, hang out in your room, do some yoga and feel like you're talking to a friend. Those are my favorite types of episodes to do. I think you guys know that. I say that all the time. And I haven't done a solo episode since the announcement of my pregnancy when I was doing a ton of solos at that time because I didn't have the energy to do anything else. And then all summer long, I went on such a spree with having guests on the show. So many guests. I had interesting near-death experience doctors. I had friends. I had spiritual teachers. I had my old therapist, Nick, on to talk about ketamine therapy and psychedelic psychotherapy. That is that is a mouthful. If you guys haven't listened to that episode yet, I would highly recommend listening. It came out about two weeks ago, the episode with Nick on ketamine and MDMA and psychedelic therapy. And today... Here we are with another solo. I also, as I close out my second trimester of pregnancy, want to have Jonathan back on the show soon to do a episode together about pregnancy and like what he's learned and what I've learned and what we're learning so far about preparing to become parents. I think it would be interesting for you guys to hear from him because he is, as usual, taking care of me a lot and putting me first and dealing with a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions. I've been in like really, really, really deep processing mode, feeling all sorts of things, spiraling from gratitude to being overwhelmed with how beautiful this process is to holy shit, no one can prepare you for how hard this is, even though I know there's a lot of amazing people talking about the reality of pregnancy online now. It's not all like sunshine and rainbows, but no one can prepare you for what you start to experience and feel in your body. So he has been just such a godsend and such a light and has really, really taken care of me. And I just love and appreciate him for that as always. Okay, with that, let's get into this episode. So excited to do a solo. So where should I begin? I think I have been feeling, as far as life updates go, the way that a lot of people in the world have been feeling. We have had a really difficult year and a half, collectively, globally. It's really interesting to me when I think about how international it is 
what we have all been dealing with and going through. And then for those of us who are empathic and feel the energy, you know, I don't even have to say why or what, that the energy has been extra, extra, extra intense and off lately. And it's been hard. I think as someone who tries to always be positive and always look on the bright side and always provide an optimistic point of view, even when I'm being the devil's advocate, it took me a while to actually accept how hard it's at it this time really is. And not just for everyone else, but also for myself, I was very much in denial that I was struggling. My mental health was suffering. I was starting to feel really locked in, especially being pregnant, because when you're pregnant, as you know, you have to take extra precautions and I'm not just back to life as usual. So I'm kind of dealing with all of that. And I know a lot of people felt the way I did that at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were home and we thought it was going to be for two weeks and then for four weeks, for six weeks, whatever we thought it was going to be, I always had a feeling it was going to be a lot longer. I was enjoying the hell out of it. And I will say that openly and proudly, I was loving being home. I was learning a lot about myself. I finally had the chance to heal. I say this often, 2020 was the year that I was finally able to heal my body because I was not doing all of those outer things. I wasn't wor worrying about showing up to that event, getting on that plane, doing this, doing that, flying all over the place, saying yes to things that probably should have been a no. I, like everybody else, was at home and I got to go inward and I got to really explore what does my body need to heal from chronic Lyme disease, from all of the co-infections and all of the similar symptoms um, that come along with chronic illness. So I got to answer those questions and it was tough. I feel like I went through a rebirth process. And in that rebirth process, I became aligned with new people in my life. And I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones that got to make new, incredible friends during the pandemic and also deeper the relationships and the friendships that were supposed to be in my life. And also the relationships and friendships that were not supposed to be big or at the forefront in my life they really dropped off. And that was not my doing. That was not the other person's doing. It was the universe's doing. It was the flow that just made it so. I think it was a very much a vortex of a time where the people who were supposed to be on my path just got closer and closer to my life and the people who were not got fur further and further. And so then I met my Chinese medicine doctor. She really helped me heal. I have a lot of blog posts about that. And I finally started feeling healthy enough to start trying to have a baby. And that's what we did. And despite a couple of chemical pregnancies in the beginning, which I've talked about, I was blessed enough to get pregnant in the end of March and found out in the beginning of April that we were expecting. I knew it was a boy before we even did the gender reveal, before we found out, um, because I felt this little boy's energy and I have felt his energy for a really long time. And he has been guiding the way for me and teaching me so much. I am currently upon recording this, 25 weeks pregnant. And when this episode comes out, I will be 27 weeks pregnant, which means I will be one week away from my third trimester. So if you haven't been pregnant, it might be hard to understand some of the things that I'm about to say, but I ask that you keep an open mind and you know that this podcast is the place to come where we talk about things that are out there, that are spiritual, that are beyond this realm with the veils lifted. And when the veil is lifted, I can confidently say this process, this experience of being pregnant is something that I feel like I have done before in many lifetimes of the eternal soul. And that brings me great comfort because I don't feel alone. I feel all of my ancestors that came before me. I feel my grandmother. I feel my mother. I feel my great grandmother all of the powerful women that came before me that brought life into this world. And I also feel the soul of my baby boy. 
And I know that he is so full of wisdom, ancient wisdom, and that he and I have been in touch for a very long time since before, since before I got pregnant. So uh, I'm used to kind of hearing from him and feeling his protection and knowing for many years that he, he was on the way to me. But now that he's in my body and his soul is with me at all times, the learning experience and the rapid acceleration of growth and involvement as a human and a person preparing me to become a mother is huge and is so far beyond anything else that I've ever experienced. It's equal parts overwhelming, exciting, nerve wracking. I have had multiple breakdowns and then add in on top of it, everything that's going on in the world right now. And I just feel like a bit like I'm in a washing machine of, <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it, of bliss and excitement and so much is about to change and fear and anxiety and I'm having faith in all of it, but I have a lot of indecisiveness about my decisions. And the interesting thing is I think pregnant or not, that's a universal feeling that a lot of people that I love are experiencing right now, that indecisive nature of where feels like home. The energy in a lot of cities is really off right now. People are seeking community. I'm seeking community, but myself and a lot of people I love are also seeking new experiences that are maybe away from community or, or different parts of community, if that makes sense. I have a lot of friends who are moving out of cities. I have a lot of friends who are starting over in completely new places, completely new jobs. And I think that's so beautiful because I think if anything, what this time has done for all of us has shaken everything up. And I am no exception. Everything has been very shaken up. And I want to tell you about all that has been shaken up for me, as I keep referring to on Instagram and my blog, the next phase of TBB, the next phase of Jordan, the next phase of me. And that's something that I really want to try to get into in this episode, even though I feel it rapidly changing. There's a part of me that's telling myself don't talk about this just yet. Everything's changing so rapidly. And there's another part of me that's always remembering and reminding myself, I was put on this earth to share for better or for worse. There's a reason that I share so publicly. So I will keep sharing with you guys. And before I tell you a little bit about that new phase, I will also tell you all of the pregnancy updates and all the things that I'm experiencing in my body. So here we are at 25 weeks pregnant. I feel mostly good. I honestly thought by this stage of pregnancy that I would be so much bigger, that I would be so obviously pregnant, but I'm still in that stage where people, I would say like 50% of people have no idea that I'm pregnant and maybe 50% of people take a second glance my way and probably think that I'm pregnant. And then there's that very small percentage of people who confidently say, when are you expecting? What are you having? Oh my gosh, do you have a name picked out? And maybe it's depending on the outfit. Maybe it's depending on the day. But I always thought at six months pregnant that I would look very pregnant and it's just interesting the way the way that I'm carrying and maybe because it's a boy I'm carrying really low and a lot of people still don't necessarily realize out and about that I'm pregnant so I'm sure that will change rapidly I'm sure that once I listen back to this in just a couple weeks once I'm in the third trimester and the baby's growing half a pound per week I will be like wow I miss those days, but in my particular body, I do feel wildly different. I feel um, so much extra weight and I also feel so much extra pressure on my nerves and my muscles and my body is in excruciating pain. So the purpose of me talking to you about this is not to complain, but more like to talk about some of the honest realities of being pregnant because yes, it's beautiful and it's rainbows. And literally as I'm talking right now, it's 201. It's 201, my lucky number, but it's so much more than just like the magical aspect of it. Like as someone who's very, very, very sensitive in my body, I feel everything. I feel every shift, every change, every, everything. And experiencing this is no different. So 
it's hard to feel drastically different than you usually feel. It's hard to have heartburn all the time. The excruciating physical pain that I've had is like an interesting symptom. I don't want to scare anybody because I don't think this is common at all. Just like everything else we experience in life, pregnancy is different for every single person. I have friends who are still doing CrossFit up until the day that they give birth, where I'm one of those people who's lucky to get in a walk every couple of days because I'm just in a lot of pain. Doing a lot of yoga, yoga is really helpful. And the pain specifically is sciatica pain. And I have this amazing prenatal chiropractor. I've been doing Pilates, a lot of strengthening and a lot of tips from fellow mothers and pregnant women who have helped me out with what to do and what not to do with this sciatica pain. But that's something that's going on that's been going on since week eight of pregnancy for me, the lower back, the um, inner thighs, so the adductor muscles, the craziest thing happened when we were at the airport in Kauai, we almost missed our flight. So we were sprinting from gate to gate, from security to gate 10 to gate three, back to gate 10. I have not done that type of running since way before I got pregnant. And so sprinting and sprinting, we're drenched in sweat. Jonathan, of course, is carrying all of our bags. He is amazing that way. But I'm just carrying, what was I? I was just carrying some food probably, but running and just feeling so much pain. And after we finally got onto the plane with literally 15 seconds to spare, my first thought was that running felt really good. I should do that more often. I love exercising. I've been really missing exercising for both physical and mental health reasons. But I quickly remembered why running with all of this pregnancy sciatica pain is not a good idea. Because by the time we got back to LA five hours later, got back to our house, I could not walk. I'm telling you, it felt like there was a horse. There was a horse between my legs. That's how I was walking. It's the only way that I could get up and walk to the bathroom. I had such shooting pain down my inner thighs, down my adductor muscles, which is also known as SPD, which I have to look up what that means again, SPD, symphysis pubis dysfunction. It's a condition that causes excessive movement of the pubic symphysis, which can cause a lot of pain when you're pregnant. So um, your pelvic joints become stiff or they move unevenly. It can occur at the front and back of your pelvis. It's also sometimes referred to as pelvic girdle pain. And you guys, oh my gosh, I was like relying on the strength of my arms to push myself up in the middle of the night and then waddle back and forth to the bathroom. And then when I did fall asleep that night, all of my dreams were about having leg surgery. The only person in the surgery room with me was my dad in these dreams. They were like such vivid, but random dreams. And that type of pain is what I'm talking about. And so again, this is not to scare anybody. I think I've had pretty severe SPD and similar symptoms like sciatica. It's just something that I've experienced. But on the flip side, I have not had very severe nausea. I've been able to eat super healthy. I haven't had a lot of out there cravings. My energy has been pretty steady. I'm still living my life as normal. I'm still working. I'm still doing a lot of things. I think my pregnancy has been, I don't know. I want to say in some ways it's been like a really flowing, easy pregnancy. And in some ways it has been a hard pregnancy with physical pain. I did not know that I, I knew that this might happen in the third trimester, but I did not know that I would be dealing with it from like week eight onwards. So that's kind of my experience. But then the spiritual components of it have been beautiful in the sense that I feel like I am always in contact with my spirit baby. In fact, a couple of years ago, I did a spirit baby episode with a woman who calls in spirit babies and is a medium for spirit babies. And I'm remembering so much of what she told me in that episode and just practicing these 
meditations where I talk to my baby or I just talk to him out loud and then he kicks back. And the really interesting and amazing thing is when Jonathan starts talking to him and Jonathan gets there, gets down there on my stomach and starts talking to our little boy and he does have a name and we call him by name, he starts kicking like crazy. And it's like he knows that Jonathan is his father. And I'll ask the baby to tell me about his soul. And while he won't tell me much, because I think that's part of the magic of the universe, I'm going to be wildly surprised when he gets here. I do know his essence and his essence is so grounded and earthy and wise. He's probably going to be a Capricorn. If he's born early, he'll be a Sagittarius. And I could see either one with his personality, but I definitely feel that he's an earth. He's an earthy soul. He's an earthy guy. He's very, he's just in all the ways that I am uneven and airy and all over the place. He is grounded and rooted and for that reason, I've had a really grounded and rooted pregnancy. And I've had a lot of inner knowings of things to do and things not to do. And for example, one thing that the baby has has not wanted me to do, the baby's spirit, is get on a plane. So I really didn't get on a plane. I took a very short flight at like week 13 of pregnancy to Sacramento, but it was not something that I really wanted to do. I kind of had to do it. The first time that I really truly flew was um, to Hawaii last week. And I feel like the baby finally is like, okay, I'm big enough. I'm developed enough. I'm ready enough for you to fly. And that's for a lot of different reasons, but mostly just the feeling of being totally ungrounded and off of the earth. He's such an earth baby. So I've had to listen to that. I had to cancel a lot of things. I had to disappoint a lot of people. That was really hard for me. So one of the big lessons that this pregnancy has taught me is boundaries and that the people in your life who are meant to be in your life will always understand. I have always been a people pleaser to a fault, to a fault in a way that I feel like it has negatively impacted my life, the way that I put other people before myself. I'm not saying I'm the only person who does this. A lot of people do this. At times, it's a good trait to be so mindful of other people's feelings. And at times, it is a true detriment to your heart and soul and mind to always, always, always be putting others before yourself. So this pregnancy has taught me boundaries and to put myself first in a really big way. And I'm still finding new ways to do that. Uh, it is so hard. Like I still wake up in the middle of the night panicking, thinking, oh my God, I didn't get back to that person. Or holy shit, this person's probably mad at me because I can't do this and this. I should call them. I should make sure everything's fine. And those are just really unhealthy loops of the mind that don't serve anyone. And when we're not taking care of ourselves, we really can't be a great friend, wife, mother, etc., whoever, to anyone. So I'm learning about putting myself first. I'm also learning from this baby soul that joy, joy is at the top of the list. Like nothing else matters. Financial success being the one thing that I'm always really stuck on because of my upbringing and money being really correlated with success and also having a lot of early success in my career and consistently redefining my worth around being financially successful, being financially independent, taking care of myself, being praised for that always. I'm now, because I have not found as much happiness, kind of chasing that lifestyle anymore at all. I'm now realizing nothing matters except for joy. And I actually, I was just on the phone with one of my best friends before this conversation. And she's always such a mirror to me. And she reminded me of that again, that there is nothing better than truly enjoying life. And sometimes we have to take a step back and yes, like we have to, our needs have to be taken care of and we still have goals and I have incredible, huge goals set out for myself. But if we're not enjoying the day-to-day -day life, what does it really matter? And that's a big realization I've had, not just in my pregnancy, but specifically in the last couple of weeks and being in Kauai, which brought me 
all of these revelations, which are accelerating me into the next phase of Jordan, the next phase of TBB, what I keep referring to. So before we get into that, because we're definitely going to talk about that, I want to thank our sponsor for today's show, Organifi. Organifi is a line of organic superfood blends that offer plant-based nutrition with high quality ingredients and less than three grams of sugar. Their mission, which is very similar to the TBB mission, is to unite the world through health and happiness by providing access to high quality nutrition, education, and community. They use only the highest quality plant-based ingredients for optimal health, and each blend is science-backed to craft the most effective doses. Everything is always organic and free of fillers and contain less than three grams of sugar per serving, like I said, and it's also completely glyphosate free. So can we talk about how TBB approved this brand is? So my favorite product from Organifi is their Organifi Green Juice. You start your day with essential superfoods that help reduce stress and reset your morning. It contains a clinical dose of ashwagandha and it supports healthy cortisol levels, which aid in weight management. Some of the key benefits of the Organifi Green Juice are that they have 11 superfoods for resetting the body and feeling amazing. It takes just 30 seconds. No shopping, no chopping, no juicing, no blending. You honestly just mix it into water or sometimes I even mix it into green juice. And like I said, everything is 100% USDA certified organic. It tastes delicious in just plain water and encourages the feeling of healthiness and productivity at work and with your loved ones. It contains vitamins, minerals, and anti antioxidants. And it's very helpful for people who feel like they don't have time to juice or blend. You can eat it on the go. Everything is vegan, non-GMO, clinically proven, 100% organic, soy-free, dairy-free. I mean, hello, it's everything. It's everything that we could ever want. And it also has a healthy boost of chlorella. So to get an amazing deal and discount, you can go to Organifi.com slash balanced. And when you go there, you will see this cute picture that they put on there of me. I love them for that. And you will get an amazing deal. The incredible deal that you'll get at Organifi.com slash balanced is 20% off all products. You can shop my favorites on there from the green juice, which I was talking about, to the gold pumpkin spice, to the red juice, everything else. You guys will love them. Organifi.com slash balanced. Enjoy. Okay, so let's talk about some of these revelations. You guys are probably thinking, what is she talking about? This girl is always changing so rapidly, always kind of shifting who she is and what she's focusing on and shifting her mind. And maybe that's part of being a reflector in human design. Maybe it's part of my astrology, my birth chart. Maybe it's just who I am. I think it's all of those things wrapped into one. And the truth is, yes, I do feel myself really changing and accelerating rapidly on this journey. And if I'm going to be really honest with you guys, I will also tell you that when we went to Kauai, which was the most incredible trip, we went there for our baby moon. We feel so lucky to have been able to do that during this time before we bring our little boy into the world. It was so much fun and so healing, being so close to nature and being so immersed in the elements, swimming in the ocean every day, walking on the beach, going on little hikes, things that I could do still very easy hikes, being pregnant, spending time with like-minded people, eating the natural and organic fruit, um, supporting the local businesses, just like living like a local and enjoying every single moment of it. I also had a very emotional time and I feel like I was processing a lot and I was grieving and mourning a lot. And what I was grieving was parts of myself that are no longer there and parts of myself that have been really, really, really hard for me to let go of. And I'll also be honest and say there were a lot of pregnancy hormones wrapped into what I was experiencing, but I don't want to say that it was all pregnancy hormones because it wasn't. It was so much more of a vortex of what I was experiencing when I was there. I cried every single day and God bless the man that is my husband because 
he was just taking care of me. He was listening. He didn't know what to do or what to say, but he did his best to just be there for me. And I have to say, if you have even one person whose shoulder you can cry on, there's nothing like it. It's the biggest gift in the world. So I was sobbing every day, shedding so many layers. And I didn't want to be sobbing every day. I wanted to just be happy and be in the moment, but being in the moment required me to feel all of these things. I decided when I was there to reread Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, and I'm still rereading it. And um, so many little gems in that book spoke to me about just the power of disconnecting our mind and our ego. And I tried to do that every single day. And when I did that, I was able to see the immense chatter of my mind, this anxious mind that I know all of us can suffer from at times. And I certainly have this anxious monkey mind and my mind was running a million miles a second. So I had to stop sometimes and just kind of like laugh at the entire experience of being human. And in the meantime, I was seeing, oh my God, my worth is so wrapped up in what I do for work. And I love what I do and I'm so proud of what I do, but it's never healthy for your identity to become what you do for work or your brand. And especially when your brand is you. And I have felt myself shifting within my brand for so long now. And now I'm at the point where I realize I do want to make some changes and I can't. I can't keep doing things the way that I've been doing them before. So here I am trying to tell you what those things are. And it's interesting because I know that this is going to keep shifting and changing. And there's a big part of me that feels like it's too soon to share some of this. But then on the flip side, I know if I don't, I'm just sucking it in and holding it in all the time. And that's not healthy. And I have made this commitment to show up and be as honest as possible with a group of people such as you all who are so like-minded and so beautiful and why not just tell you where I'm at with everything? So for one, everything that the last few years has brought out has shown us that the internet has changed. It has become a place of extreme toxicity and judgment and a place where sadly a lot of people are really unhappy in their lives right now for good reason. I understand it. People's lives have drastically changed. The rug has been ripped out from under so many people over the last year and a half. And with that, there's a lot of keyboard warriors hiding behind their screens saying nasty things. And what I don't agree with at all, at all, at all, at all is the rise of this call out culture. You could call it cancel culture, call out culture. There's a huge difference in my opinion between Approaching someone kindly and telling them that what they've said has offended you or hurt you or hurt a group of people in any way, I think there's always room to have an honest conversation and honest discourse about everything that that looks like. I'm all about open conversations and trying not to hurt people's feelings. There's a huge difference between what's been going on lately in the online world. And by lately, I mean, this has slowly escalated starting all the way about seven, eight years ago to just the last year and a half. It's gotten out of control with the cancel culture and people who are so angry. Usually there's so much hate and sadness in their hearts, which really stems from being deeply unhappy in their own lives. And People don't realize that what they're saying to a stranger on the internet is something that they feel about themselves. So for example, because I'm a reflector and because I have been living my life on the internet for so long, if people want to know anything about me over the last 10 years, they can look it up. It's all out there. And because I share so much and because my human design is literally to reflect people back to themselves, when I'm living in alignment, that's a good thing. 
And whether or not I choose for it to be that way, I do serve as a mirror to other people. Sometimes I wish it wasn't so. And the only way to really shield myself and have boundaries from everything that comes from that is to withhold parts of myself. And I don't like to do that. But what I do like to do sometimes is take some time off the internet and save the most intricate parts of myself, the parts of myself that I'm still learning, my creative endeavors, my passions, my goals, my struggles, the things that inspire me, my pregnancy, my marriage, my relationship, save that for the people in my life because the people in my life are chosen very wisely. It's a very, very tight circle. But on the internet, we don't have any control over who sees, over who reacts, over who projects. And I do have a thick skin. This conversation is not at all to say that I'm complaining because it comes with the territory. But truthfully, why does it have to come with the territory? Why have we just accepted that we live in a society that it comes with the territory, that if you are a public figure in any way, People have the right to hate on you, to just project all of their inner demons straight onto you. That is not the type of world that I am trying to build for our future children and for us and for our souls and for our future lives. That's not the kind of world that the universe created the earth for. We should be supporting each other and helping each other grow. And by all means, disagree, disagree with people, exercise your right to disagree, but do so in a respectful way. And also don't spend your time engaging, fighting with strangers on the internet and trying to cancel them. Or this is what happened recently. Sometimes my content for whatever reason will be so triggering to a certain person And I have a zero tolerance policy. So if a comment is mean, negative, affects my heart and soul, or just doesn't abide by the community guidelines that we have set out for the balanced bond for the last many years, we just delete. We usually block as well, but sometimes depending on the comment, we just delete, we move on, we don't give it a second thought. And occasionally the deletion of someone's comment will send them into a rage. And this is what happened. Uh, Well, this was this week, but you guys will be hearing this in a couple of weeks with someone who has been relentlessly harassing and bullying my entire character and being. And again, this happens all the time, but sometimes you just accidentally come across one of those people or they come to you that is relentless and ruthless and brutal and cruel. And once they get deleted or blocked, they will send an army after. (laughs) This happens to me. This happens to a, a lot of public figures. Maybe a lot of people don't notice it, or maybe the bigger of a public figure you are, the more that you can remove yourself from it. But I happen to see a lot of things. I happen to see a lot of my messages, my comments, because I actively try to be in in touch with my community, you guys, as much as I possibly can. And all of this to say, the cancel culture has become a way for people to bond. And this person who got really turned off, really mad by my deleting their comment said, now I'm going to send my community after you. And they and we are going to expose you for everything you are and blah, 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 blah. Of course, expose me for what? For what are you talking about? Expose me for literally just being who I am and sharing who I am. The beauty of the internet is you can unfollow anyone at any time. And so these comments, they they sort of got out of control. And the really sad thing is I'm a strong person and I have been dealing with this for years, but people never have any idea what's going on on the other side of the screen. So they would have no clue that because they have decided to spend their day choosing me as someone to quote unquote, try to expose or whatever it is, bully, expose, harass, dig things up about, et cetera, et cetera. They have no idea that I'm over here dealing with some of the most difficult mental health moments of my life. 
preparing for this baby to come, feeling this drastic change in hormones, watching my life change before my eyes, just in the way that everybody else has over the last year and a half, questioning where do I want to live? Where do I want to spend my energy? What makes me happy? Oh, maybe these people weren't meant to be in my life. Well, maybe these people are just all of these things I was talking about earlier in the episode that I know a lot of people are experiencing, the bullies on the internet would have no idea that I've been struggling in that way. And just think about it. If I'm struggling in that way and I'm in a place where I'm open enough, vulnerable enough to talk about it publicly, imagine all the people who are feeling incredibly lonely right now, incredibly depressed and unhappy, and all it takes is one person online or in person to be an asshole, for lack of a better word, to tear them down completely. So this this here podcast conversation is kind of my open message to say that I don't agree with cancel culture. I don't agree with the call out culture. If you disagree with me, guess what? That's completely fine. If it's your thing to call people out and try to expose them and cancel them for one thing or another, I get it. You know, maybe that's your thing, but I also feel really bad feel really bad that that has become such a cultural norm because it shouldn't be because we should be able to have conversations and open discourse with people who disagree with us, with people who are different than us. And the only way that we can ever make the world a better place is to start being honest about these things and to start talking about them. So part of the change, part of the next phase of the balanced blonde and me is just not having, not having the fear of speaking up about these things. It's been a really treacherous, tumultuous couple of years for all of us globally. And a lot of us have been scared to share how we really feel about plenty of things. And so I realize if I want to be the type of spiritual teacher that I look up to, that I know I came here to be, that when I feel aligned with my highest self and my highest soul, when I have complete clarity on who I am as a person and who I came here to be, that person's not afraid. So a little bit more fearlessness could go a long way with what I share on The Balanced Blonde. In the meantime, I'm also getting my website redesigned. It's going to reflect me to the deepest core of cores. And same with this podcast artwork, you'll see it all very soon. And I feel like everything is moving in the direction of just shedding the layers, lifting the veil, being more honest and sharing how I really feel. Because something I don't agree with to my deepest heart of hearts is how cruel the cultural norm has become online. And for many of us, online is like just as prevalent as offline. We work online, many of us, if not all of us, at times we have to get on the internet for our job. And how hard is it that people are just, I mean, this comes down to even during brand partnerships, even um, people who reach out and pitch themselves to come on the podcast. There's just such a general lack in general. I'm not talking about everybody of people's feelings and respectfulness and awareness. And we have always with everybody who I've ever hired and myself, I still do most of my own emails put a huge emphasis on just talking to people like the people, the hum- the humans that they are, because we're not robots behind the screen. But I think sometimes, sometimes that can get lost in translation. And just one last little note about the cancel culture conversation before I move on to the next big thing. Some of the best people that I know have been quote unquote canceled by society, by whoever, whoever deemed them cancelable, cancelable online. And luckily, most, if not all of them have made their comeback because they deserve it, because they're kind people, because they learned from any mistake if they made a mistake in the first place and because they're resilient. And I really admire those people, but it also breaks my heart because I've watched those same people build a wall around themselves and not feel as safe to share. And I've, I've been there too. So like some of the things that I'm working on right now that I'm so excited about that I know are my soul's purpose and 
I want to create and I get requests to create all the time. I'm scared to release them into the world and I'm releasing that fear. I'm letting go of that fear because I, I too, I don't want any hate. I'm a sensitive soul. I'm not going to lie about that. I have a thick skin, but I'm a highly sensitive person and nobody wants to be the target of online bullying. I've brought up human design a lot and I've brought up astrology a lot. And it's interesting because a lot of things do go back to what's written in the stars about our personalities. And I notice some people, some people I know, some of my friends can easily say just about anything, make a comment on every, everything going on in the world right now. And it can just kind of skate by. Maybe people don't notice, maybe they get a lot of support, but I say anything and I am targeted in like the biggest news articles that exist. I mean, this has just been the trajectory of my life for the last 10 years. And I have come to accept and know that part of that is that reflector nature or holding up that mirror to others. And I've learned how to deal with it. I have been in therapy over it. I've done medicine journeys around it. I've created a certain, a certain amount of acceptance around it, but no, it will never be okay to be bullied and it will never be okay to bully others. And that's something that we really need to create a larger conversation around. And so hello, hello, next phase of TBB. The next thing is I've been really figuring out with this baby coming so soon, what my life is going to look like, what my schedule is going to look like, what my career is going to look like. I've never planned on not working. I know I will always create and work in some capacity. And I also think it's really cool that I can be somewhat of a stay at home mom, but also work because I do work from home and I will always be creating for the balanced wand and for all of the exciting things on the horizon. But I still am figuring out what that's going to look like. I don't know if it's going to look like continuing the four episodes a week for the podcast or, oh, four episodes a week would be a lot. I'm not Joe Rogan over here. Four episodes a month for the podcast, or maybe it will be two episodes a month, or maybe I will stop doing a whole lot of other things and I'll just do six episodes a month for the podcast. I honestly have no idea what the future holds. So I'm very open to what it may be. What I do know is the reason that I'm being more honest on this podcast right now and really committing myself to continuing these open conversations with you guys is that the podcast is the best part of what I do. I love connecting with you guys. We've created and cultivated such a special community where I can hop on the microphone. I can talk about Pleiadian aliens. I can talk about plant medicine. I can have my old therapist on. We can do animal communication we talk to mediums. You guys have evolved alongside of me over these years and likewise. So I'm so thankful. I'm also so thankful for our sponsors because our sponsors give me the ability to have freedom in my life. And I think freedom is honestly one of the most important and only things that matters. I have come to realize if I have freedom, I have everything and freedom can look really differently for different seasons of life and different people. And I'm exploring deeply what freedom means to me right now. Like, I think I talked about this earlier in the episode and forgive me if I'm like jumping around. I actually had to pause this episode in the middle, go to an appointment with my midwife. We looked at a house in Panga Canyon and I've been all over the place. So it's actually the next day now, but I, I know that I talked about financial security along with freedom and those two things really go hand in hand, but I'm doing the inner work right now of playing with what does that even look like to me? How can I release? How can I take off more and more layers of what I have always thought financial security quote unquote means to me? Because in fact, it means something entirely different than I, than I used to think it did. And we are always evolving and changing in those ways. So freedom, freedom is huge. And then one thing I know, if I don't do this, if I do not pursue these two things that I'm about to say to you, my soul 
will break in half. I will be crushed. And I've been (laughs) struggling over this for a long time with, I've been talking about this for probably seven years now, that there are two different books that I've been working on for a long time, but they change constantly. Like I've finished them. I've rewritten them hundreds of times and I'm going to be restarting them all over again because the ideas just keep flowing and things keep changing, but writing every day and pouring my energy into these books is something that has given, it gave me the will to live when I felt like I was going to die from Lyme. And it continues to give me the will to live now. So one of them is a healing memoir. It's something I've been working on for a really long time. And then the other is a series of fiction books. And many of you may know this, many of you may not know this, I was in school getting my master's for creative writing in graduate school in New York when I started the blog. So writing fiction is actually bringing me back to my roots and it's very healing. So here's something you guys could do for me. And I know I've done this before. I've done this before. Forgive me, but I'm doing it again because it's really, really helpful for me. And I'm at another crossroads, probably because the world has changed so much over the last several years. Will you guys please send me a comment on my latest Instagram and tell me whether you would prefer to read the memoir, self-help spiritual book, Think Louise Hay meets Gabby Bernstein meets all sorts of other interesting characters. Um, That would be the self-help spiritual book, which is just so special to me and it's coming along. Would you rather read that first or would you rather read fiction first? And I'm so back and forth on this, probably because so many of us, I think really need an escape right now from the real world. And so fiction, I'm, I can't get enough fiction. I'm so, so, so into Taylor Jenkins reads fiction books and Colleen Hoover's fiction books. And I'm just like losing myself in fiction. It's changing my life. It's healing me. Um, so I want to, I want to add to all the cool things going on with fiction right now, but I also am not sure if I can write the fiction until I write the memoir. And then on a much grander scale, much grander scale, when I zoom out, and really look at this from a higher point of view, from my higher soul's point of view. I also know it doesn't really matter which one comes first and which one doesn't come first. And maybe that's why whatever you guys tell me will help point me in the right direction. And maybe I just need to like shut up about it and listen to my soul. But you guys are my friends and family from all over the world. So please do comment on my latest Instagram on the balanced blonde. All you have to do is say fiction or memoir or self-help spiritual, or tell me why, just whatever it is. And comments are better because I actually recently created a boundary where I'm not really reading my direct messages. And that has nothing to do with how much I don't love reading them from you guys because I love receiving them. I just have had to draw a boundary somewhere so that I can spend less time on my phone, which is the next phase of TBB and Jordan is that I was definitely becoming such a phone addict, such a technology addict. And you know, that horrible thing, that amazing, but horrible thing on our iPhones that tells us how many hours a day we have spent on our phones while mine was getting dangerously high. I mean, I remember the first time I saw it when when Apple first came out with that feature, I was around like five, six hours and I did think, okay, well, I work on my phone, but that's a lot. Okay, well, let's just say it went up several hours on average and I could sense it in my mental health. I could feel it in my body. I could sense it in my mind and I just know how icky it feels to spend the morning scrolling Instagram or to spend the evening or the weekend scrolling Instagram. That's really not who I am. And none of us are actually, none of us came here to be that way, but it's addicting and being pregnant and being kind of physically debilitated with some of these pregnancy symptoms 
I think, you know, the phone time just went up. I was finding a lot of solace in spending time on my phone, connecting, creating stuff, creating on TikTok, Instagram, blogging, which I still enjoy doing, but there are boundaries. And so I'm really setting those boundaries with myself. Potentially, I will set a time limit, but time limits, I'm not a time limit kind of girl. I know some people really, really tout time limits for efficiency and that's amazing for them. I have not I've not done that well with that type of structure in my life, but we shall see. Maybe it's what I need. Sometimes what we resist the most is what we actually need the most. So I will remind myself of that in my toughest moments. Um, But instilling those boundaries, that's going to be a bigger part of the, the future of TBB. And then honestly... I just sense my brand shifting. I do, because I, I sense myself shifting. And while I have posted so much over the years that has shifted, whether it goes from food content to yoga content, sorry if you heard that background noise, I was looking through my Instagram so I could speak to it more clearly. All sorts of content. My content has shifted a lot over time and over the years, and it's going to continue to shift as I become a mother, which is so exciting. But right now, while I'm still posting food because the celestial diet excites me to no end, I also feel things shifting toward who I really truly came here to be, which is a spiritual teacher. And maybe when you go and comment on my Instagram or you can leave another comment about this, um, if you're going to be so kind as to let me know your thoughts between fiction and memoir. The other thing I would say is just if you're here for the spiritual teaching content, you're in the right place. You can also just like shoot me a little something, something on Instagram so that I know that you're here for it. What I'm going to do truly is I'm just going to stop worrying about who's not here for it, who is here for it. Oh, who's going to think I'm whatever, whatever. I don't, I don't care anymore and I don't really have the luxury of caring anymore because I realize and I recognize how important it is for people to speak up and for people to not live in fear right now, but to lean into love instead. And so that's what I'm going to continue to do. And before I wrap up here, I do want to thank Ollie Pop. You guys know Olipop is the healthy alternative to soda and it is the only one that I drink and I love it because it tastes just like the sodas I grew up with but without the spoonfuls of sugar and the artificial ingredients. They have so many delicious nostalgic flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, and strawberry vanilla. My favorite flavor is a strawberry vanilla. I like never stop drinking it and now they also have grape which I have to say is my other favorite flavor because I have always been a grape soda kind of girl. We honestly can't keep enough Olipop in our house because Jonathan drinks it and finishes it by the dozen. Like I will walk into our living room after a night that he's just been on the couch watching TV or reading and there are five scattered about and I'm like, okay, this is amazing. I'm happy that these are so healthy. They're so low in sugar. They have only two to five grams of sugar from natural sources and no no added sugar at all. All of their products are non-GMO, vegan, paleo, and keto friendly with less than eight grams net carbs per can. And what's really cool also, because we love gut health on this podcast and in the TBB fam. So if you're into probiotics or prebiotics and fiber rich foods, then you will love that Olipop supports a healthy gut microbiome thanks to the prebiotics, botanical extracts, and the nine grams of plant fiber that exist in each can. They help you get more fiber in your diet and you're also drinking a delicious, healthy alternative to soda. We have worked out an exclusive deal for the Balanced Bond podcast listeners where you can receive 20% off plus free shipping on their best-selling variety pack. This is a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Go to drinkolipop.com slash blonde or use the code blonde at checkout to claim this deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-O-L-I-P-O-P.com slash blonde. This discount is only valid for their variety pack. You can also find them in over 3,000 stores across the country, including Whole Foods, Sprouts, Kroger, Wegmans, and Air One. 
So I thought I would close out this episode because I think I think I've pretty much told you guys about most of the changes on the horizon for TBB and for me. There are some other ones, but I think I should probably probably keep them close to my heart until they actually happen because I know better than anyone that speaking things into existence a little too early can sometimes mess with the magic of the universe. But you can probably, you can probably understand what I might be talking about because I have alluded to it a little bit or a lot bit in this episode. So to close out this episode, I just wanted to answer a couple of frequently asked questions that have been coming in lately, specifically about pregnancy, because everybody wants to know how the pregnancy is going, cravings that I've had, all that kind of stuff. So just to answer the most commonly asked questions that I've gotten so far, how far along am I? When this comes out, I'll be 27 weeks almost heading into my third trimester. When is the due date? The due date is Christmas, December 25th, 2021. Definitely taking all guesses, estimates, et cetera, on when we think he's going to be born. I think he's going to be early. Jonathan thinks he's going to be late. I would love to know. I love hearing from all of you you guys, all the Capricorns and Sagittarius's that are born around Christmas. It has been so cool for me to hear how many of you love to have your birthday at the holiday time, because at first I was worried about that with our little guy, but now I think it's probably just a really, really special time to be born. So that is the due date. What have been my biggest cravings? Everybody wants to know. My biggest cravings have been green juice every single day, which started in my first trimester because I could not stomach vegetables. So I would drink a green juice with apple or pineapple in it every day so that I could get all of those added greens. And in the green juice, I like to have kale, ginger, celery, spinach. And like I said, apple, pineapple, orange, something to keep it sweet because that's part of what I'm liking in this pregnancy. Also tons of fruit and tons of acai bowls. And then lately, Jonathan and I have been discovering all of these amazing gluten-free vegan pizzas. We were eating a lot of gluten-free vegan pizza in Kauai. And then we found a place in Topanga that's really, really good. And we have like some of our favorite spots all around LA. So like a lot of gluten-free vegan pizza with cashew cheese and then these big lemony kale salads on the side. I honestly haven't been that into sweets other than the natural sugar of fruit. I'm starting to get a lot of heartburn, like very, very, very painful heartburn, which is pretty common around this stage of pregnancy. So I'm trying to avoid spicy food, chocolate, and my beloved coffee. Although I'm still drinking coffee because Like I said, I have had some dips with my mental health over the last couple months and coffee brings me joy. It makes me excited to wake up in the morning, but I've been keeping that caffeine intake really, really low because they say anything around 400 milligrams or less is safe in pregnancy with caffeine, but I try to be super cautious and keep it to like a hundred or less milligrams. So I just have a little bit of cold brew in the morning with my oat milk, or sometimes lately I've been making my own nut milks and having that with the cold brew and cinnamon and maple syrup. And that is like my morning treat. It's the best way to wake up. And A lot of people have asked about boundaries. I feel so funny every time I say a lot of people have asked, but I'm not like reading off of any specific list right now. I'm just drawing from all the DMs and all the messages and emails that I've been getting lately. So people have asked how to maintain boundaries during pregnancy. And that has been, that has been a learning in and of itself. I think I talked about that a little bit in the beginning of the episode and Honestly, I'm so grateful to this little boy, to this little soul for helping me put myself first. I realized during this pregnancy 
that I would pretty much put my body through anything at the expense of making other people happy because I really care and love, I care about and love the people in my life and I don't want to hurt or disappoint anyone. But now that I'm carrying a baby, literally with child, I am not just putting myself on the back burner by going and doing things that I don't want to be doing or don't feel comfortable doing or don't have the energy to do. I'm also putting my baby on the back burner and that's something I can't do. So I'm definitely embracing this new early stage of motherhood in the sense that I realize I'm going to be able to instill such better boundaries for myself and my family because of what this little boy is teaching me. So that's a huge one. And then tips for boundaries. If it's not a hell yes, it's a no and just get comfortable saying no. And I find the less that I beat around the bush and the less that I try to come up with a billion excuses to add on to my no, the better it feels all around, the better it feels to me, the better it feels to the person that I'm saying no to rather than I'm so sorry, I can't do it. I'm pregnant and I'm in a lot of pain and the pandemic's going on and this is how I feel. And I've had a really rough time lately and I'm not sleeping. And, you know, that's just stress. (laughs) That is unhealthy to communicate in that way. And I can say that because I communicated in that way for many years It's just a clean no. It's not going to work. We're not going to make it tonight. Um, I'm almost in my third trimester, living a little differently. This is how it goes. And people are very respectful. I think people who have done any amount of work on themselves, which most people have, usually are inspired by the permission that that gives them to then put themselves first in the future or in any given situation. So I hope that that helps. And then others have asked, how is Hudson doing with the pregnancy? Hudson is my cat for anyone who doesn't know. And he was the first, the first creature to know that I was pregnant, not just because he was the only one here when I found out, but he also, I've talked about this a bit, started sleeping on my womb, on my uterus before I even knew that I was pregnant. And he has been extra gentle with me, extra intuitive. We do these deep eye gazes and he's just been been really good all around. He's very much an alpha male. I'm surrounded by boys. <laughs> and so if he wants to act out, he will act out. And he hasn't been doing that during my pregnancy because I think he knows, he senses that I don't have all the energy and the patience within me right now and that my mind is all over the place right now. And he has been very, very, very gentle and understanding from my point of view. And then, you know, cats, they're just so intuitive. I do think uh, that he, because he senses that I don't have a lot of energy, I think he was kind of moping a little bit. So I had to communicate with him through our animal communicator and also just with my own techniques to let him know, don't worry, just because I don't have a lot of energy doesn't mean I'm sad or sick. It just means that I'm resting and and embracing this rest. And cats are all about rest. So he just cuddles and he just joins me and it's the best. And then for all the questions that come through about Jonathan and how our relationship has changed during the pregnancy, or enhanced, because it definitely has, I would rather just bring him on for an episode to talk about it. So perhaps in the next couple of weeks, I can wrangle him in. We can just talk about upcoming parenthood, things that he's learned, things that I've learned, ways that he's coping. He's been such a saint. I know I said this already, but I can't say it enough. I have definitely, I never thought that I would be like extra emotional while pregnant. I just thought there's a lot of things before you're pregnant that you think are kind of like a myth or they just don't happen to everyone. Well, maybe they don't happen to everyone, but I have definitely been feeling the emotions (laughs) so deeply and he's been so patient and he's learned right alongside of me and we're learning together and growing together. And now that I've been talking for one minute and, or sorry, one hour and 11 minutes and 11 seconds, I feel like that's such a good sign to just sign off. So I want to thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. I really just talked stream of consciousness over the course of two days, um, a little bit yesterday and a little bit today. And I said some things that were very vulnerable. So I hope that they could 
help you to be more vulnerable, more open in your life about topics that like who the heck cares just about any freaking topic. Just be you and be honest and let's just stop tearing each other down. If you don't like someone, just unfollow them. Don't like leave them hate comments or leave them mean reviews or try to tear down their career. Just unfollow them. And if you support someone, tell them. And I know I said, I've had a lot of boundaries with my DMs lately, but I always see them. I still see the things that come through. And if you really appreciate what someone's doing online, it goes a really, really, really long way to tell them and support them. And that's why you'll probably see me on Instagram and TikTok. I comment on so many people's posts because I want them to know, I see you, I love you, I support you. I've gotten to become friends with so many influencers over the years, both big and small. So I'm, I'm always trying to support people back because I know how good it feels to know that your work is resonating with people. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I hope that this was fun and informative. Whoa, my voice just cracked. Fun and informative, even though we never had a plan. We just chatted, we being me and the microphone and you guys. And thank you to our sponsors, Beekeepers Naturals, Organifi and Olipop. You can find the links and codes and discounts in the show notes. Those are three of my favorite brands. I highly recommend shopping them and checking them out. You guys will love. And if you feel inspired to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, send me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalancemon.com and I will send you my free gift, which is my free Soul on Fire yoga ebook, which is like 250 pages worth of yoga. It's super valuable. And thank you for being here again. I love you guys. We'll be back next week with a fantastic guest who I can't wait for you guys to listen to. And with that, we will talk soon. Have a soul on fire day.